There is hardly anything more bizarre in space than black holes. Some of them are unimaginably large. In fact, black holes can absorb so much matter that they continue to grow almost indefinitely. So, how do black holes differ from what we imagine? Which one is the biggest we've ever discovered? And how much bigger can they grow? Greetings to everyone on the Space Op channel. In this video, we will talk about the most mysterious space objects, namely black holes. Before you start watching, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate your support for our effort. I wish you a pleasant viewing. To understand how black holes work, you need to understand gravity. To throw the ball to a certain height, you need to apply a certain amount of force. It's the same with rockets, only they weigh a lot more than the ball. The speed of the rocket must be greater than the gravitational pull of the Earth. And this ratio of speed to gravity is known as the escape velocity. The minimum speed required for a rocket to escape the attraction of our planet is at least 11 kilometers per second. But what is the speed of a black hole? It is either equal to the speed of light or even more. And since nothing can travel faster than the speed of light, you won't be able to escape a black hole. As soon as you pass its event horizon, you will fall into the boundary of no return surrounding the black hole. But if black holes don't let in any visible light, how can we see them? Although black holes may appear to be empty regions of space, in fact they are not like that at all. The fact that we cannot see the black hole itself, but rather its effect on the surrounding matter, does not mean that there is nothing inside it. This is due to its strong gravitational field. Everything inside the black hole is tightly packed and cannot escape. Since the gravity of a black hole attracts gas and matter, a swirling region called an accretion disk is created around it. And because these various particles around the black hole are moving extremely fast, they begin to heat up and emit X-rays and gamma rays. And so, using special telescopes and satellites, we can actually detect these rays and assume that there is a black hole somewhere out there. In fact, any object can become a black hole. But this requires two main ingredients, mass and high density. To create a black hole from our sun, you would have to compress it to a radius of only 3 kilometers. And to create a black hole from the Earth, you would need to compress its mass into a sphere the size of a small pea or less than 9 millimeters in radius. But do such tiny black holes even exist? Theoretically, there may be black holes the size of one atom and even smaller ones. But if these tiny black holes existed, they would be harmless and would evaporate instantly after their creation, since they would be much hotter than our sun. But let's leave the hypothetical primordial black holes behind and move on to the type of black holes we've been able to observe. We know for sure that stellar black holes exist and they usually form when a massive star explodes with such force that it shines brighter than an entire galaxy of stars. This phenomenon is called a supernova. The mass of our sun is about 2 nonillion kilograms, or just over 4 nonillion pounds. The mass of the sun is used as a unit of measurement for the most massive objects in space, including black holes. The mass of an ordinary star that will turn into a black hole after the explosion is about 3 to 10 times the mass of the Sun. Cygnus X1 is just an example of a stellar black hole, and the first one we have discovered. Cygnus X1 is located in our galaxy about 7,000 light years from Earth. But what's interesting about it is that it rotates at almost the maximum speed, which is 800 times per second. Despite the fact that Cygnus X1 has 21 solar masses, it is still a fairly small representative of black holes. Medium mass black holes are next, and their name speaks for itself. For a long time, medium mass black holes have been the missing link in understanding the evolution of black holes. This type of black hole is already much larger, since they can have a mass hundreds of thousands of times the mass of our sun. In the year 2000, Astronomers stumbled upon powerful X-rays, and, as you already know, this is one of the ways to detect black holes hiding from our view. These X-rays were traced to a dense star cluster in another galaxy, and based on the brightness of the received signal, 
the black hole is estimated at about 50,000 solar masses. This may seem like a big number, but it's almost nothing compared to supermassive black holes. One of them, like most galaxies, is located right in the center of the Milky Way. Sagittarius A has a staggering mass 4,600,000 times greater than the Sun. Sagittarius A is about 26,000 light years away from us. So there is no threat to our planet or our solar system. At the same time, there are supermassive black holes in some distant galaxies that behave strangely. Discovered and captured by the Hubble telescope, this abnormally bright quasar called 3C186. There is an object in the galaxy, which is located at a distance of 8 billion light years from Earth. Now we already know that the central parts of most galaxies contain a supermassive black hole. But what astronomers have found out about this black hole is that it is not quite in the middle. In fact, it is located about 35,000 light years from the center of its galaxy, and it is further than our Sun from the center of the Milky Way. So, what can set in motion a black hole whose weight exceeds 1 billion suns? Scientists believe that two galaxies collided about 2 billion years ago. When they collided, the central black holes of the two galaxies began to rotate around each other and eventually merged into one, creating powerful gravitational waves. As a result, the newly formed black hole was abruptly ejected in the direction opposite to the direction of the strongest gravitational waves. The force of such an impact was so huge that it could be compared to a hundred million supernovae exploding simultaneously. 3C186 is still moving away at a speed of 7 million kilometers per hour. At this speed, he could fly from our planet to the moon in about three minutes one of the largest and most massive black holes ever discovered in this category would make Sagittarius A times look like a small asteroid located next to our Sun. Inside the huge galaxy home 15A, which is home to about 2 trillion solar masses, the black hole is 40 billion times more massive than our Sun. For comparison, this is more than half of the stars of our galaxy combined. Hill 15A is 700 million light years away from us. Until recently, scientists believe that the upper limit of the massive luminous black hole is about 50 billion solar masses. They had no idea that the new discovery would change the situation. But the brightest objects in the universe are not stars or galaxies, but quasars. Not so long ago, a quasar with a brightness of 140 trillion solar, called Tun 618, was discovered. It is so huge that it eclipses the entire galaxy in which it is located, and the ultra-massive black hole feeding it is a real monster with a mass of 66 billion solar, which makes it even more massive than all the stars of the Milky Way combined. Tun 618 has a diameter of 390 billion kilometers. The quasar is located in the distant constellation of Venereal Dogs, about 10 billion light years away from us. Because Tun 618 is so far away, its light takes more than 10 billion years to reach us. We see this quasar when the universe was only a few billion years old. And by that time, he could have grown a lot more. One of the ideas is that for the growth of such a monstrous black hole must have existed another black hole, which served as a seed for feeding a larger one by merging with it. But computer simulations show that this is not what happened to Tun 618. A more likely scenario would be the merging of several black holes into one over time. So far, we continue to find new black holes, which seem bigger and bigger every time and scientists have even begun to speculate that there may be a new class of black holes called incredibly large black holes. The mass of these black holes can exceed 100 billion solar masses and even much more. All this begs the question, if black holes are constantly growing, does this mean that they are eternal? Black holes slowly evaporate and lose a tiny fraction of their mass as a result of a process called Hawking radiation. But the fact is that this is a very slow process. It will take about the same number of years as our universe for a black hole with a mass of 100 million tons to lose only half of its mass. And the bigger they are, 
the more this process slows down. As soon as all the stars go out or explode, black holes will exist for a very long time. By the way, if you want to watch a video about this and how the universe will gradually freeze and die, let us know in the comments. The radius of the observable universe is approximately 46 billion light years. So, there is still a lot that can surprise us. I hope one day we will find something that could shed light on the dark mysterious spots scattered there in the sky. So far, it's like trying to guess what's behind the door, knowing only what size the room can be and what the temperature is in it. We hope you enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching.